So let me start by saying that this is, I'm really enjoying this visit. So this is a great program and I'm very happy to have a chance to contribute to this lecture. So thanks for giving me the chance to, to talk. So this is about uh, switching random walks. So what is a switching random walk? So suppose that you have a sequence of IID random variables. So suppose you have another sequence of IID random variables, and you assume that these are jointly independent. And what you do, you consider the following sequence, uh, Yn. So the value at next step is given as follows. So it's uh, Yn plus the increment xn plus 1. If Yn is positive and if x is negative you take an increment of a different type xn plus one prime so uh, the regular variables without any prime correspond to positive axis the primate variables always correspond to negative axis. So, and then this, this sequence is a Markov chain. When it's positive, it takes one type of distributions. When it becomes negative, it follows another type of, of increments. That's why it's called switching. So it's, and there is a switch at zero. So, and then uh, you need to decide what you do at zero. So uh, originally you toss a coin and uh, independent coin and choose between the two with the fixed probability. And uh, everything I will be talking about works for every fixed uh, any fixed probability, but for the expository purposes of this talk, I do this. So now it's well defined. And uh, typically, uh, so this is of course a Markov chain and uh, it is typically called an oscillating random walk. Uh, everyone who works on it calls, calls it like this. And I think that this is a misnamer because uh, this term is reserved for special uh, random walks. So this type of uh, Markov chains were uh, first studied by Kemperman in 74 and only for integer valued increments. And he basically studied a recurrence of this. Uh, Markov chain. And the next work was by Ragozin and Foss, and then another work by Borovkov, and then there was a little break, well, a quite large break, and then the, there is a, so, and people were mostly studying uh, integer valid case, and they looked at recurrence, and recently there were few papers which now study uh, limit theorems, functional limit theorems about such Markov chains. And the, the papers are very recent. One of them is by uh, by Iksanov, Andrei Pelipenko and, uh, and Power, so published in 23. And the other one is from the group of people around Mark Pinier, so Pinier and Wo, around the, the same year, and Pinier and Ngo, 20, uh, 2021. So uh, what can you, uh, study about such a sequence. You can study recurrence and the uh, limit theorems, as I said, or you can study convergence. I'll talk about this later. And convergence to what? So, well, you need convergence to something. You need an invariant distribution. So you study existence, invariance distributions, and then maybe uniqueness. And uh, for this talk, I'm interested in existence and uniqueness of an invariant distribution. So what, why is this thing uh, interesting for, for, this, uh, for this program? So especially for the past workshop on reflections. So um, so pro probably I should have said that uh, in, uh, in the case when these variables have the same increments, this is of course 
a usual random walk. So the other case of interest of relevance to, to the past workshop is the case when these uh, variables are anti-symmetric. And why is that? Because now if you look at the absolute value of this sequence, this becomes a, this, it turns out that this is under this assumption, this is a new Markov chain. So, and it's called reflectors. Reflectors random walk. And then you can check that the uh, transition probability of this random walk is, is just this for non-negative x and y. And usually it's taken with the minus sign. So here you assume that x1 is non-negative. So then, so this uh, model under this assumption redu uh, reduces to a reflected random walk. So in other words, vice versa, a reflected random walk is, uh, follows a result on a reflected random walk, follow from a result about switching random walk in this particular case. Okay, so uh, I will be, of course, making some assumptions. And the assumptions are that my, so my uh, switch and random walk does experience switches. So I'll always, we are assuming that, that what? So first I need two generic random walks. So one corresponding to the increments above zero, the other one corresponding to the increments below zero, the prime walk. And my assumption will be that the lim inf as n goes to infinity of the walk on the positive axis is negative infinity. So, and then the lim sub of the negative, of the one on the negative axis is plus infinity, almost, almost surely. So which means that if you are above zero with positive probability, so this walk with positive, uh, with probability one will, will go here. So it will bring you below zero. And then you use this walk, it will bring you above zero and so on. So this condition ensures that uh, the switching walk as a non-trivial behavior, so it, it experiences infinitely many switches. So this is a very natural assumption. So this does not reduce to any of these. So this is the main thing. And when is this satisfied? So this is satisfied, and this is a way to think about this, that the the positive increment have a non-negative, uh, non-positive drift. So when you're positive, you sort of drift towards zero. When you are on the negative axis, you have a drift upward. Uh, so that's that's a very good question. So it is possible that these conditions are satisfied, and when there is no expectation. So it's. So this, what I want to say that this, this plus this, and the 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 uh, expected non-degeneracy non imply a, but not not vice versa. So in particular, you can have uh, heavy-tailed variables like in the in the paper of Andre. So, but maybe just one of the ways so there will be two two interesting cases one case is, is when both expectations are zero and the other case is when the inequalities are strict so you have strictly so you have sort of well visible drift towards zero and then under these assumptions i will be looking at different um, 
invariant matrix. Okay, but I stress that in principle both walks can be can be transitive. As well as both walks can be recurrent, which corresponds to zero expectation, which in particular happens when the expectation is zero. So they, these are the assumptions. And because I will be trying to answer and, and answering the uh, uh, uniqueness question, so when is a Markov chain having a unique invariant measure? Well, it needs to be defined on the right space, right? So, and I need to define the, the state space of this. Of this Markov chain. And I'm saying that the state space, which I call Z, will be as follows. So I, I consider the supports of one type of increments topological support, this is one set. I take a union of this with the, uh, this set. So this is just a collection of set. And now I take the, uh, no, not sigma but uh, I take the, uh, the additive subgroup of the real line generated by, by this set. So in, uh, in, other, in other words, uh, I take values here, I take, all possible combinations. Uh, I take all possible finite sums with plus and minuses. But don't worry. So and, and then I uh, so this is the smallest closed additive smallest closed additive subgroup. So the key thing is that this I want this closed, and then there are two two cases basically. So this is much simpler than it looks. So this is simply. Either a multiple of of the of Z of positive integers, or just the whole real line. But this is parallel to what you see when you study random walks. So in many types of limit theorems, you need to consider lattice versus non-lattice case. And here is the the lattice case. The so lattice means that your random walk lives on some multiple of that. And here I sort of have two random walks. That's why I need to, to combine them in a way like this. So sort of this, this thing lives on the space, which is possible combinations of sums and differences of possible values of this one and this one. Uh, so, and then just, but anyway, so this is either a factor of integers or the real line. And then, so this is additive subgroup. So I can add elements of there. This is a, a locally compact group. And on, on it, I, I can define the hard measure lambda. And this is actually a very simple thing. So this is, in this case, that this is just the counting measure or the Lebesgue measure. Okay, so this is the, the setup which, which exhausts all the uh, opportunities. So any, any questions so far? Okay, and uh, so what I will be, what I will need now, I, I want to, Unfortunately, give a number of I, I will give some notation and then I state state the uh, the main result and then I uh, give you a number of examples uh, with particular cases and it, which show you how to think about about this um, this uh, result. So I will so as I said a number of some some, some notation. So first of all, I need what is called ascending and uh, descending at like the heights of, of the walk. So this, let me, let's say A and A will be ascending uh, 
led their height of S. And how is this thing defined exactly? So first you, so S is a random walk which starts at zero. So I consider the, the moment tau plus is the first moment when when it's when it's non negative and then s is just the value s at s a so the first ascending length height is the value of s at this moment a is something non negative so and then i need let's say d for descending like the height of s and how i define it very similarly so s minus tau, tau minus is the infimum uh very good question but not not yet not yet so so good so far so i i first define it for 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 s right and then remember that a stands for ascending this stands for descending so this so d is as you expect and that this is something something negative and i did this for for s but remember that i have two walks right so i i define the prime variables exactly in the same way so i prime d prime yeah so as i as i said so the, the annotation is slightly heavy but i so this is let's let's go through and then there will be a result and i talk through the uh, the meaning of the result so uh the heights now i have four variables ascending descending heights when you're above zero and when you are below zero and uh so for the another bit of notation so i don't perhaps i can just i need the uh, I need a renewal measures of California ladder at the heights. So this, and uh, you see, I'm what what I'm doing now. I'm defining everything in terms of s. So and then I I'm adding primes whenever I, I needing. So the u is the uh, renewal measure of ascending ladder heights. It's u plus. It, it's a it's a So this is this thing. And then I'm taking the ascending ladder heights. And ascending ladder height is a distribution. And I and I'm taking the involution, default involution. And this is the renewal measure of ascending ladder heights so uh, there are, there is many notation but so this plus is supposed to to tell you that uh this is a measure which is supported on on positive half line okay and then likewise i define the renewal measure of descending ladder heights minus so to so, to show that it's supported on the negative half line and i do this very uh, very similarly and i take evolutions of the descending ladder height. okay so this is the so this is the definition and then 
So here is back, back the notation. And uh, unfortunately, as, as usual, when you deal with random walks, sometimes you need to distinguish between uh, weak ascending heights and strict ascending heights. So, and, uh, and actually, if, if I, if I'm, let's say more specific, I, I need to decide, uh, I, I define strict versions of this. So putting an, a strict indicator uh, variable here when you are strictly positive. And then what I said here actually needs these strict versions of variables, A and, and D, but in many cases, this doesn't give much of, of a, of a, a difference. Just I'm saying that in many cases, when you remove this S here, replace strict by non-strict, this just multiplies your measure by, uh, by a constant. Anyway, so these are, so far we have uh, ascending, descending variables above zero and below zero. And well, the strict versions from, from these versions, I construct renewal measures plus and minus a, uh, above zero. And I, I also have the prime versions of this and this below zero. And now I'm almost almost ready to, 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 to state my result. Almost done. So now I, I define two measures. So new, new plus, which is the measure which has this density. So this, this plus tells you that the measure is supported on the positive half line where it has this density. So now, now, now it's, it's even more messy. So on the positive half line, you use the variable from the negative axis. So, and then similarly, the uh, new minus is, so here you, on the negative half line, you use the variable from the positive axis. Okay, and then at some point I'll need new, which is the sum of the two. It's a measure on the, on the whole line. Okay, and here comes the, the result, and then I, I will be commenting about, about this, this result. So this is the main theorem, which tells that under, under my assumption A, I remind that A means that the, it, it implies that the switching walk experiences infinite, infinitely many switches with probability one. So it's, it's sort of oscillates between positive and negative half line. So under this assumption, so the following measure, you know, which is obtained as follows. So take this, this measure on the positive half line and convolve it with, with this guy here, new plus. You got a measure on the, on the positive half line. So then take this measure on negative half line and convolve it with, with this measure. But now for the, for the primed version. So this is the, this is the, the measure. It's a rather explicit. And then the statement is that is that this measure is invariant for the reflected walk. So that's an explicit formula for the invariant measure of the, of the switching and walk. And now, because I, I mentioned uniqueness, let me tell, tell about uniqueness. So the other part is that, so moreover, mu is 
they are unique, locally finite. Locally finite invariant measure. And I, I, I denote this as locally finite invariant measure. Locally finite invariant measure. Of y in either of the following three cases. So what are the what are the cases? Case one. So when x one is strictly negative, x one prime is strictly strictly positive. So. Again, this means that when when you are positive, you you cannot go go up. You you, you can you, you can go only down, and and vice versa. When you are below, you go you go only only up. So some sort of some sort of degeneracy. Yeah. Uh, very good, very good. So as 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 I promised, so first first uh, uh, having uh, the results on the board, and then I will comment on few examples, including this one, uh, ex explicitly. But uh, this is this is a, this is indeed covered, and then uh, I, I'll comment why I, I wrote it in, in this in this funny form. Just, just wait a few minutes. So this thing is is unique either when you have this or in the second case when when uh, the switching random walk is an actual random walk and then and then for random walks so if i'm saying to you that it's it's the unique invariant measure of a random walk, of course, it must be just the Lebesgue measure. Something proportional to, to the Lebesgue measure. So by the way, when, when I say unique, I mean up to multiplicative factor, obviously. Unique in, in this class of locally finite invariant measures. So I'm saying then when the, the thing is a true random walk, this formula, simplifies to this and what is the factor c uh well let me just write it explicitly to convince you that everything is explicit apparently it turns it turns out that i mean so here i was saying that i have i'm having two variables a d a prime d prime but they coincide pairwisely because my increments coincide. And moreover, uh, one is one is non-positive, the other one is non-negative. We have this equation between the between the between the numbers. Anyway, so we have uniqueness in the random wall case. And in part C, when we also have uniqueness. So that is uniqueness when I'm assuming that every point in the support of new is topologically recurrent for, for Y. Meaning that topological recurrence means that if I start from Y, then I will return to any fixed open neighborhood of this point with probability one. Just just the usual recurrence of, of random walks. Okay, so then uh, as as I said, it's it's a good idea to to go for to, to discuss examples. And because Sergey asked, so let me uh, first so basically the next maybe 10 minutes are examples. 
So maybe let me start start with the example uh, by which corresponds to the case when you when you are above you have drift over zero. So strict strict drift over zero. And uh, when you are below, you have the strict be uh, below zero. So in this part, um, so yeah. So good, good point. Yes, I am. Um, so let's let me assume for. Uh, for uh, I I think no, but okay. Let's I I I specify later. But so this is the uh, the case. So only in this case, you know, is no is finite. And when what what does this uh, physically mean? Let's let's try to. To think about about let's say these variables, let's say ascending variables and uh, the the corresponding renewal measures. So if the random walk S has a negative drift, so there is a positive chance that it that this variable is is infinite. So in this case. Uh, not necessarily this one, but, but definitely this one variable is is simply undefined. So then, in this case, the uh, the it, it, it it's law. It's a it's a zero measure. It's it's a trivial measure. So, uh, but this is still quite quite interesting because in this case, in this case, the renewal measure. Let's say u plus has the following interpretation. So, for example, u plus. So I. Yes. So this. So. Uh, uh, let's say so uh, u plus, and u minus prime okay and then uh you can so there is something known and very nice about this finite measure so it turns out that if you normalize it so it's a finite measure when you turn it into a probability measure so it turns that this is nothing but the nothing but the distribution of the supremum of the walk. So in this case, Sn is something which goes goes to negative infinity with, with probability one. So this supremum is finite, but I'm including zero. So this is something which is non-negative. Non so that's a, that's a non-negative random variable, and mm -hmm. so if I if I if if I just don't include the uh, the summation, then it has the the delta the delta. I mean, you're talking about a or yes, yes. So we should we we. we... Yes, exactly. So you 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 so if if there is a drift which goes down, then uh, this is a degenerate random so this is a degenerate random variable and this is a degenerate random variable as well. So you can take infinite convolutions. So this so the total mass is is the sum of geometric series with uh, with exponent less than one. So this thing converges. That's why. The total mass is finite, and I need to normalize. So, 
finally, um, this is uh, this is the normalization. So now it says that. So in this nice case, the renewal measure has a has a very nice interpretation as the as the distribution of the maximum of a random walk. So this is the so in this formula, I'm having the distribution of the supremum. And likewise, in this formula, I'm having the distribution of the of the infimum. And uh, so in uh, in in this case, so this so these uh, variables, uh, so these measures nu plus and nu minus. So the, these are the measures of certain form of of this nice 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 form whose probability is the tail of the distribution function. And these measures also are arise in uh, in the renewal theory, and you can uh, associate. I mean, you can normalize these measures, and you can associate a random variable. Uh, to each measure, and then you can restate this result uh, in the probabilistic form that this mu is just the distribution function of of uh, of of the following thing. So here you have sum of two independent variables of one type, one of them coming from here, and on the negative axis you have sum of independent variables on of the other type so you have you can characterize a normalized mu as a mixture of sums of two explicit independent random variables so and this was done by 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 Barovkov in uh, In 1980, so who found this explicit formula for uh, for mu in this in in, the, in this case? So this was this was an explicit formula, and this was uh, published as so sort of as a note, uh, as as a sort of as a note uh, which was attached to uh, as the sort of summary of of a talk given given at a, at a seminar. So this result was not widely known. And then this formula in the particular case when X is strictly negative and X prime is strictly positive and integer valued, this formula was uh, uh, sort of uh, rediscovered uh, rediscovered in the recent papers by Vo and Brimon. So this is, uh, this is not an, uh, an obvious question. And of course, the... Uh, the question is, how did Barovkov get to this formula? Well, because he knew a lot in, in renewal theory. And I guess that he guessed the formula and then he proved it, which is something which I wanted to overcome. But uh, and then uh, I will, I certainly won't have time to explain how to obtain the formula, but there is a way to sort of derive them, not to guess, but to obtain. This is this is one point. But yeah. Uh, okay, so this is uh, so so this is uh, this is the the other thing, and then this brings to discussion of of convergence. So now, so Barovkov found one uh, invariant probability measure. I mean, finite renormalized, so it's a probability measure. So now, question: If you start your random walk, uh, do you have convergence? So is there is there is there convergence starting uh, from from a point, and where would you converge to? Uh, Say it again. Uh, so it is it is it is in 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 this case C. But okay. But now uh, back. Uh -huh. 
fixed one prime, prime is expected negative and positive. Then it is topological re recurrence. But maybe expectation of x1 is negative infinity. Uh, oh, okay, so let's let's uh okay so let's uh, let's let's clarify this after but now now let's 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 remove this question by by adding this and and uh back to back to alice's question so this is one of the um so this is in my case the most interesting um question about about this chain do you have uh do you have convergence start, starting from from every point and then one way to establish um uh, let's say if you had convergence then uh to to something then this would hopefully imply uh uniqueness however no uh, there are no results about uh convergence of such a markov chain under uh this assumption in general so you need to make some assumptions on the increments you either assume that the increments are on the lattice or you suppose that both s and s prime are spread out meaning that so there is a component with density and then you you can use uh, you can use the the usual uh, dublin type arguments uh okay i think it's one it's one is not enough but uh this is this is not what interests me that's why i cannot answer this question i want a general result and i cannot obtain it and uh, there was sort of modification of of this model uh so a related thing which we did with alex and exactly the same problem so that this um uh this uh, chain is very is very capricious because if you started from two different points somehow you cannot couple the trajectories together so when so even if the two points are, are close so if if you use the same uh driving variables they go together until uh the value of of the chain uh just uh, so that the zero is just between them then you need to use one increments for the one which is negative and the other increments for the one which positive they they, they decouple and it's the coupling doesn't work so um, it's, it's unclear how to prove convergence in this case many people stated convergence so for example Barovkov improved the paper of so he got this result generalizing a paper by Gillian Benes Negarovsky who claimed convergence and gave a proof but I believe there is an error there he himself claimed convergence and he never published the proof and then there was a paper of lot of who proved convergence under this spread outness or uh integer validness assumption so convergence is the most interesting uh but at least by by uniqueness we know that the invariant measure is unique so it's a good candidate that from every point you would converge does this answer the question uh okay so this corresponds to case sort of to case c although i'm not given given the results about about recurrence but now let's sort of do the the um there are other examples let's look at what happens at case a and uh, in case a uh, x is non-negative and so which means that that animal cannot go up and then so as which is the first value when you are strictly positive so this is completely degenerate so it's it's low is zero so in this case uh u plus and u minus prime are both delta functions and in this case so mu is is just this nice measure nu for which i have density okay and uh, so lastly what do I, what do i want to say so the the first the, the third tractable case is what can i say in case in case b when uh, my switching random walk is an actual random walk and i'm claiming uniqueness 
and this is not not my result at all so this is uh, an old result by the knee so it's a follow-up paper which uh, expands the expository paper by Choquet and the knee which is very well known and somehow in this follow-up paper there is a theorem which is not well known but somehow it tells you when a random walk on the line has a unique invariant measure so again forget forget my switching thing go back to s uh, when when a random walk on the real line has a unique invariant measure well it needs to be defined on the right space so here we are i mean in this case x and x prime are the same just remove this okay but still in general this nice result of the knee uh, states that there can be at most two uh, ergodic invariant measures so so any invariant measure is a linear combination of these two one is the the back measure and there it might be that there is another one with an exponential density with respect to the Lebesgue measure if the underlying walk has a finite Laplace transform at some point so however so an, an, an example is that so you may know that if you take a simple random walk which is plus plus or minus one if it's zero mean then the counting measure is the unique invariant measure however if you give it a shift then the uh, counting measure is still unique but then there is another invariant measure and somehow this condition a excludes this other 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 case okay and then maybe just for further understanding of what's going on so for for this case when when i'm a random walk so the things are um simplify well so this is now now a product of so now this is the Lebesgue measure and i'm saying that there is certain equality on the so the Lebesgue measure split it to positive half line and and a negative half line and if i look what what this says uh so maybe maybe just just for, for understanding let let's look at the case when z when when the state space is is r so we don't think about the trouble as zero and then this this says that the 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 back measure So this is the quality of of measures on the on, on, on the on the positive half line and uh, so how should i think about u plus in in this case so this is the so this is the renewal measure so it's defined like this but i can uh, i can let's say rewrite it as as follows so this is so the expected number of times the ascending led the height process belongs to to a point so in other words so u is u at an interval it's just the average number of record values of the random walk which belongs to 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 an interval and somehow this tells you that if you start your random walk from some measure new 
then the expected number of records, so the expected number of, of renewals is the Lebesgue measure. So it, it means that if you if you consider this as a function of x, then this, this just grows linearly as a function of time, uh, as a um, as a function of, of the length of the of the interval. So this so that this means that the uh, new is is a invariant, so is, is is a sort of stationary distribution for the for the uh, renewal process. So th this is why I was saying that the distributions of these forms are very well known in um, in renewal theory. So uh, so basically uh, the uh, the the um, the conclusion of what I said is that in the case of the random walk, so this form of the invariant measure recovers some classical stationary, uh, uh, some classical identities about the stationarity of a renewal process. Okay, and so any any questions on, on these examples? No, and maybe, uh, and maybe, let me, let me give you a corollary because I started by stressing connection of this thing to reflected random walks. So it turns out that, uh, so if you have in, 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 in the case of anti-symmetrically distributed innovations, so the absolute value chain is the reflected random walk. So, and then it's very natural that from here, taking an absolute value, you recover an invariant distribution for reflected random walk. So if I you know the measure mu r, which is mu of negative a and, and a. So a is so it's it's a measure on on positive half line. So then from here it follows that mu r is the unique locally finite invariant measure for a reflected random walk one. So and how about that? How about the novelty of of this result? Well, so it's 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 partially no uh, it's partially null. So it is so it is so this so this measure mu was known explicitly. So the invariant measure of um, reflected random walk. We can find this result in Felder. So then this was generalized by Knight in 78 uh, for continuous case, then by Budiba for the for the uh, discrete case. Uh, but this is this is existence, and then uh, in this case there are convergence results, and then there are um, a very very strong convergence result because somehow for for reflected walk there is so there is no uh, for for reflected random walks it's possible to couple to couple uh, two chains starting from uh, close points uh, from starting from any points and use the the same increments so that uh, asymptotically the trajectories of these uh, two chains starting from different points will merge together and this is called the property of contractivity but uh, only in the recurrent case which I, which I'm not assuming and the, there is a whole collection of papers of uh, compositions of IID 
Lipschitz, uh, Lipschitz mappings, so a series of papers by uh, Volgen, Vios, and Mark Pinier, who study uh, conversions of such type of, uh, of reflected Markov chains and their generalizations. They have uniqueness result due to this property of local contractivity, uh, but so they have uniqueness, but they couldn't, so th they don't have the explicit formula for mu r, which follows from here using, using this. Maybe, so the last, the last bit, so here I'm always saying that the thing is locally finite. Why do I need the, this? Well, technically speaking, because everything relies on the result of Dini. In, in my proof, I, I do this. And uh, if I drop the assumption of local finiteness, then there is no uniqueness. So if I take x1 to be minus one, and then x1 prime to be plus square root of, of one, so it's a, it's a fully deterministic system. So I can, uh, so basically one invariant measure is, is given there. And the other invariant measure is that, okay, so that's a dynamical system. It's just started from some point, go uh, forward, you have a, a, a finite, a fine, uh, countable collection of points go backward. So this will be a closed set for this dynamical system. And then put uh, put uh, counting measure on the of the on the set of possible forward and backward trajectories of this dynamical system. And then this will give you a point measure, which is not locally finite, and it's invariant. So locally local finiteness is is essential. And I think I must stop here. So in 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 this uh, in this case the state space is is the real line. So because the uh, well, but yeah. So it's a. Uh, so this this G is the closure of the, so it's it it it's, it's the closed thing. So it's 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 uh, really really important. But somehow this this is a counterexample to. Yeah. Uh -huh.